This is Mitch for Indigenous Insights, and we have our guests in the studio. To my left, I have Stephanie Cree. Welcome back. And for those listening for the first time here, what is your job title? What you here for today? I am the KBIC Natural Resources Department Water Resources Specialist, and I'm here to talk about our water day. Very good, which is coming up on Friday, March 13th. And you have another here in the studio with you. Are you going to do his speaking or is he going to step up to the mic or what? I think he's going to step up to the mic. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got her. All right. Jerem Forsha, water technician. Your water technician. And so what is uh what does that entail over there? What's your Sampling. job description? Sample and surface water. Sample from the big lake here? Yeah. And how, how do you sample that surface water? Like give walk us through the process. I mean, just collect little samples and send it somewhere? Do you mix Bring it yourself? To the lab, yeah. A little grabber. And what do you do in the lab? What are you looking for to test it for? Sampling for it for? For metals? Yeah. What kind of tests, are, what does a typical test look like? What kind of metals are, are in our water here? Or is it just all over the place with different tests? We have different tests. We uh, Jaren goes out and uh, collects water samples uh, out here on Lake Superior and the various lakes around the reservation and around uh, rivers and streams. Um, he takes water samples at... Um, homes that use private wells for drinking water but um, he'll go out in the field grab a sample and send it out to a lab that we have in Crandon Wisconsin and we sample for nutrients metals bacteria and then he has um, he also has tests that he does out in the field right there when he grabs a sample as well Okay, that sounds like it'd be another cool show to like come out in the field and get cameras out there and stuff. So like when you're testing these waters and stuff, you know, different locations, do they change year to year a lot or is there is it usually pretty consistent and I mean how's that go? Yeah, you know, um it rainfall has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, runoff from roads will will change um will change the water. Okay. So um, in the summertime, we'll see a lot of changes, of course, with like bacteria. Okay, that's right. I'm, when they had the uh, all that rainfall up north in Houghton Ways, there was concern with all the runoff. Wasn't there something like that? Right, yeah. Um, uh, the bacterial levels got really high and, you know, um, the amount of rainfall that fell in the short amount of time, you know, the, the, the sewers couldn't keep up. With, with that rainfall so they kind of overflowed and you know and then that runoff went into the lakes and affected right. our water quality so you're one of the guys out there monitoring those levels check that out very good that's important yeah. a job i mean that's important i mean how many people how many people's drinking water was affected by that so all right so we are here to talk about the kiwana bay indian community natural resources department tribal water day friday March 13th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Ojibwa Casino Bingo Hall here in Berga. So tell me, are you guys uh, excited as we get closer to the event? Must be a lot of work. Yeah, it's quite a bit of work. It's it's keeping us busy. You know, um, we haven't been in the office much at all the last couple of days, you know, out running around, uh, getting last minute things, you know, finished and getting ready for our guests from out of town to come in. And, you know, yeah, we're getting really excited. Looks like there's going to be a lot of great presentations here. Once again, it's the Ojibwe Casino Bingo Hall here in Berga, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday, March 13th. This event is free and the public is encouraged to attend. And uh, I'm trying to figure out how we want to break down this schedule. Do you want to go over... Actually, no. What we're going to do now is take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to go over the first half of the schedule for the day. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. This is Indigenous Insights. This is Mitch for Indigenous Insights. In the studio, I have... Stephanie Cree. And I have... John Forsha. And we are here talking about Tribal Water Day. It's coming up Friday, March 13th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Lots of stuff going on. Big schedule here. It's at the Ojibwe Casino Bingo Hall. We're going we're gonna to go over the first half of the schedule. So things kick off at 8 a.m.? Yes, they do. Doors open at 8 a.m. Um, we have table space still available. We do have um, some great vendors signed up uh, displaying artwork. Um, we have some wood birding art that's going to be on display and I believe for sale. Uh, we have uh, Brian Welch, who's a local artist here, displaying six to eight pieces of his artwork. And um, 
just, you know, various individuals from the community are going to have a lot of educational outreach materials. And then our festivities start at 9 a.m. All right, very good. It says there's going to be some light refreshments there and uh, media, the display gallery open. Are you going to have... When I first seen the the media open or whatever, I was thinking, are you guys going to have any of the news channels or anything? Anybody visiting? I hope so. We we did invite all the local newspapers, and um, we will be inviting the news to um, TV six to come out. So hopefully they'll take us up on the invitation and and show up. I'm sure they will. I mean, you guys been getting a lot of coverage lately with all the great things you've been doing over there. So nine a.m. things kick off. What what's happening at nine? Well, uh, nine a.m. we have a opening song with a wood Lynn Singers coming in. And then Doreen Blaker, uh, one of the tribal council members, will be giving a opening and welcome to our guest. And then we have a group of our um, water walkers that will come in and um, talk about their efforts in protecting our waters here on the reservation. Very good getting that cultural aspect in there. Absolutely. And that's at 9 a.m. And then going down the schedule. We just go right down the schedule. What's coming up after that? At uh, 9.30, we have Alan Waltz, the director for Tribal and Multimedia Programs Office here, along with Thomas Short, the director of uh, EPA Region 5 Water Division. And they're going to give a talk and presentation about um, treatment as a state for water quality standards and how EPA encourages tribes to go after this authority. And they're going to leave a lot of time open for questions and answers. Because we know, you know, when KBIC came out and put their application in for treatment as a state for water quality standards, there was a a lot of unknowns and people had a lot of questions and um, were pretty curious about it. So we're encouraging those people who had questions um, to come out at that time and ask the people who are going to approve or disapprove our application to ask those questions at that time. We're very fortunate that they're traveling from Chicago here to take those questions. Um, And then right after that, starting at 1030, we have Corey McDonald from Michigan Tech University who is helping us Uh, develop our water quality standards for the reservation and he's going to come in and talk about how we develop those standards the science behind those standards and um, the work we have um, accomplished so far and then I apologize but is is he the one that was in the studio that time? He was in the studio with us um, a couple of weeks ago with Val Ganyu another contractor from Michigan State or Sorry, from Michigan Tech University. Ooh. I know <laughs> <laughs> that um, both of them are helping us quite a bit on on these standards, and um, so he will be there presenting. And same thing, we were going to give a lot of time for questions and answers after his presentation. And then beginning at eleven fifteen, will be Patrick Lapointe and Karen Anderson from our fisheries program. We had, we had both of them in the studio too. Right. And um, they're going to be giving us an overview of our fisheries and um, their sea lamprey work and, you know, aquatic invasive species and our stocking efforts that we do here. Very cool. I mean, that and that's just the first half of the day. Lunch is provided. What's uh, what are you guys doing for lunch? Well, geez. Um, yes, lunch is provided free. This, like we said, we said many, many times, this is a totally free event. Uh, public is encouraged to attend. We have a taco bar, desserts, refreshments. We'll have refreshments all throughout the day. We have uh, raffles going on throughout the day as well, and lots of a uh, very cool. Good I mean, things to take away. You don't know the power of those two words when it comes to promotion, (laughs) taco bar. I mean, (laughs) I'm telling you. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll go over the second half of the schedule here. This is Mitch for Indigenous Insights, along with Stephanie and Jared. This is Mitch for Indigenous Insights. We're back in the studio with... Stephanie. And... Jaren. I mean, I always got to make you guys introduce yourself. That's how you kind of get it going again. Like, do I speak? When do I speak? <laughs> All right. So second half of the schedule here for Tribal Water Day coming up Friday, March 13th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We've worked our way up to lunch, which is taco bar, taco bar. And then the second half gets going at 1 p.m. 
Right. Um, we have Rob Crawl from Glyphwick, the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, coming into um, his, the name of his presentation is called Assessing Climate Vulnerability Through Science and Ojibwa Knowledge. Uh, we're really fortunate to have him coming up um, to present. Uh, we're really excited. Um, I, this will be the first time that I've met Rob, and we've kind of talked back and forth over email. And um, so we're excited to have him here. He's going He's going to give an overview of um, Glyphwick's climate vulnerability assessment research on various inland and Great Lakes fish. It's so cool to see those words right together, science and Ojibwe knowledge. Yes. I mean, that right there, that's what it's all about. Yes, it is. I mean, so that right there, you got Glyphwick, you got the EPA, you got Michigan Tech, you got all your NRD employees. I mean, I mean, this is shaping up to be a really, really good day. It is. I, I think what we're really trying to display is all the partnerships that we've um, built and the different collaborations we've got going on with with these different agencies, you know, local, state, federal, you know, we're working with everyone here. And, you know, it, it's really it's really great to see, you know, yeah. we're working all working really well together and then when we have an event like this and you send out invites for these people to attend and they're excited to attend it really makes you feel good i mean i I bet you there's a lot of people out there that would do more but just knowing that there's a group of people like you out there working together to do this might help them encourage them to do more because i'm sure there's a lot of people out like well i'm just one person what can i what can i do with just one person well you're not you're part of this collective group that's putting on this tribal water day right so then let's was that all you had to say about that one rob crawl you said rob crawl crawl okay sorry about that rob (laughs) i get distracted sorry (laughs) um so after rob we have kathy smith who is also a um KBIC Water Walker. She's the one who organizes a, a lot of our water walks around here on the reservation, you know, and she's taken on the Pauline Spruce Water Walk that we do right before powwow. She's going to be coming in and she's going to talk about Minuman and our restoration efforts that we do out at the Natural Resources Department. We have different, you know, various areas that we go out and we're trying to restore those wild rice beds and, um, she leads up that team. So she's going to come in at one thirty, and, and that, that also includes the podcast series, which we're looking to get episodes three and four done here pretty soon, actually. Awesome. So you can check that out on the Indigenous Insights Facebook page, the Natural Resources Department Facebook page. And yeah, it's, I mean, that's really cool. Oh, yeah, you guys just you guys are doing such good work. Even that that, that Monoman team, all those people in those interviews, it's just so cool to see that collective group. Right, you guys that, are you guys are making some movements. And that started a few years ago, you know, where we were, you know, we came together with like Wisconsin and Minnesota and had those workshops and to see where it from the very first meeting to this last meeting that we had in December is just amazing how much it's grown. Absolutely. So after Kathy, we have Karina Schmidt, who is our KBIC NRD ecologist, and she's going to be giving a small presentation on our wetlands as the Ojibwa medicine cabinet. Yeah. So as many people know, you know, wetlands provide us many different traditional medicines, and she's going to give us a little talk about that, um, the medicines we have out there and how we use them. Very good. So that gets us up until 2 p.m. here on the schedule. Once again, we're talking about Tribal Water Day, March 13th, Ojibwe Casino Bingo Hall. Everything kicks off at 8 a.m. in the morning. There's going to be a lunch provided. I think we're going to take a quick break here now, and then we'll go over the the last quarter of the day. Sound good? Sounds great. <laughs> All right, we're back in the studio. We're talking about Tribal Water Day. So for anybody that has questions about this event, want more information, they get a hold of you? Yes, please do. And where do they get a hold of you at? They can reach me at 906-524-8701, or I can be emailed at s-c-r-e-e at kbic-nsn.gov. All right, very good. Once again, this event is free and the public is encouraged to attend. Things kick off at 8 a.m. Tribal Water Day, Ojibwe Casino Bingo Hall. And you were mentioning that it's you know it says light refreshments, but you're actually kicking the day off with a little bit of a breakfast. Yes, we like to feed our people. 
<laughs> Everybody likes to be fed. Yes, so we will have light, um, we say light refreshments, but we'll have breakfast items for everyone beginning at 8 a.m. Um, we'll have coffee, teas, water available. Um, we do, Karina Schmidt, our ecologist, also makes some wonderful teas. Um, so she'll have a nice table set out with her many different teas that she makes, and then like you said, we have lunch provided, a taco bar. All throughout the day, we'll have raffles, you know, for different items to, to raffle off. And again, everything is free. And the community, all ages, is welcome to attend. Oh, I was that's one of the questions I was going to have. Would, would this be an event to take the kids to? Is this a family event or? Well, absolutely. You can bring them. And we have, you know, we have some items that the kids can do, some little activities that they can do while, you know, the presentations are going on as well. Very cool. Very, very cool. Because there's a lot of kids running around. (laughs) All right. So let's go back to the schedule here. We worked ourselves up to 2.10 p.m., which is the community environment. Oh. We were going to do that last time, huh? <laughs> Which, but the Community Environmental Monitoring Program. Correct. Um, that is a partnership that this is the second year we've gone into this agreement, and it's with Superior Watershed Partnership, um, the Marquette Community Foundation, Eagle Mind, and then us, KBIC Natural Resources Department. We just signed into our second year of this agreement. Um, and it, it's really nice to see where this where this where we're at in this agreement because as you know we had you know some hesitation with the the eagle mine years ago and then now t- to be able to come to the table and to agree on something is really nice to see and so uh, we'll have these individuals here to talk about the agreement and what it means which is it's a monitoring agreement Um, They take our suggestions and, you know, last year, Jaron here has went out sampling at Eagle Mine alongside Eagle Mine staff and Superior Watershed Partnership. And what was what was that like working with those guys? Good. It was good. I mean, you think I mean, we're watching them close, right? They do their job good. They care about what they're doing. You think they, you know, I mean, how how to go? You got that insight insight. (laughs) Went pretty well. Yeah. What'd you guys and what'd you, what'd you find out there? I mean, what were the results from that? I think I didn't see the results personally, but I think everything checked out good. Okay. So, and that's just adding to the collaboration here for the event entirely. Two more more groups on there. Right. So then there's going to be. Oh, I'll let you read that because I can't say those words. <laughs> oh, I can't either. But <laughs> it's an update on PFAS, which is um, they're considering an emerging contaminant that they're finding a lot in drinking water, and um, we have the state of Michigan. Tom Asmus coming from the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, which was formerly MDEQ. So he'll be coming over and giving a short presentation on that and um, giving the results of our um, drinking water facilities here because all of our drinking water facilities around the reservation here has been tested as well. And then after that, we have two professors from Michigan Tech um, given a little presentation on a grant opportunity that they're hoping to get funded. And what that is is called Bridging Knowledge Systems and Expertise for Understanding Landscape Contamination. So they'll give a short presentation about that. And then lastly will be National Marine Sanctuary, a Keweenaw Lake Superior designation. And again, we have two more professors from Michigan Tech coming in and giving a short presentation on that. Very cool. And that brings you to the closing remarks at the end of the day, around 4 p.m.? Yeah, I would say around 4 p.m. we'll have our closing remarks and we'll have another song um, by the Woodland Singers um, at the end of the day. Very good, getting that culture in there. Right. All right, so once again, for questions regarding this event, please contact KBIC NRD. Stephanie Cree, 524-8701. Tribal Water Day, Friday, March 13th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Ojibwe Casino. Bingle Hall here in Barriga. I think we're gonna do we're gonna do one more segment before we say goodbye. This is Mitch for Indigenous Insights. Right, we're back. This is Indigenous Insights. Okay, so I wanted to ask you this question. Pretend like you're. Oh well, first you're not just you're gonna be like emceeing it, moderating it, right? 
Yes, I'll be one of the um, MCs, I guess you can say, along with our director, Evelyn Ravindran. That'll be fun. That's always fun to do that. Uh, pretend that you are just an attendee, though. What would you be most excited for on this? What what part of the schedule grabs your attention the most? Oh, of course, you know, KBIC presentations. <laughs> um, I, I really like hearing about the fisheries programs, you know, and their restocking efforts. And then, you know, of course, wild rice and... Um, the Ojibwa medicine cabinet, you know, Kriya yeah. is such a great speaker. Kathy's a great speaker and Patrick and Karen as well. You know, it's, it's really great just to, to be able to sit in the audience and, and hear them talk about their programs. And, um, it when is. you really love what you do, it really comes out when you present. Absolutely. For sure. Jaren, what about you? When you look at, take a look at that schedule, which one, uh, which one grabs your attention the most? <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Best answer. You know what? Actually, I mean, I guess that was my first question. Like, what's for lunch? Which is a taco bar. Oh, phone's going off. Uh, all right. So I guess we went over the whole schedule. Is there anything else that you, you wanted to mention? Well, we hope to have some really great, exciting news at the end of the day on Travel Water Day. We're still kind of up in the air about that, but hopefully, you know, the end of the day closes out really, really well for for the Natural Resources Department. You know what? Uh, with that being said, if there's something going on, I think we'll... I should be there, so we'll open up a live feed, and that'll go out on the Indigenous page. We can share it to the KBIC Natural Resources page, so you can stay tuned for the most updated news on social media. And there was something else, right? Yes. Yeah, so this weekend, we have a waste oil event coming up. Um, these waste oil events will be happening in the first Saturday and the third Wednesday of every month up at the transfer station. Um, it begins at 8 a.m. until noon. So two days a month we have. And so tomorrow will be the first one for this month. Tomorrow, as in, because this is airing on the Saturday. Sorry, yes, it is March seventh today. Oh, so it's to, oh, so it runs. Wait, what's the what's the times? It is eight a.m. till noon. Oh, so it would it just got over then? It just got over, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's the third one. Right. Uh, so we had uh, Serene in here talk about some of the results coming in and stuff, and it's something that is building up a great program. So you missed it today, but it's going to be coming up. What'd you say the? It will. The next one will be March eighteenth. March eighteenth. Very good. Do you actually do you have the list in front of you? The different things that they take. And I think coolants was the one thing they weren't taking. Right, right. And paint cool. thinner. And wastewater. And wastewater. Yes. Okay, very good. So take advantage of that. A great opportunity for people around the area here. So with that being said, I think we can conclude this interview one more time. I guess we can go over the date here. Tribal Water Day, March 13th. It's this Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Ojibwe Casino Bingo Hall in Barrigan, Michigan. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you too, Jared. You're welcome.